Sometimes when I'm making YouTube videos, I am pre-rendering some of the clips and then I use those pre-rendered clips in the final timeline and then I render them again. And I always ask myself, how much quality am I losing because of such a workflow? And this is what I'll be answering today. So how many times can you re-render a certain clip before you start noticing the loss of quality? Ooh, it's gonna be interesting. So I'll be doing this in DaVinci Resolve. I have a clip over here which was recorded with my Sony Alpha 7 IV. This is a 10-bit video file with a 42 chroma subsampling. It's really high quality video and it's 500 megabytes per second bandwidth. So it doesn't get any bigger than this. Well, actually it would if it would be a raw file, but this is an all intra compressed file with the codec H.264, kind of the standard codec. Now I'll be color grading this and then rendering it out with the codec H.265, which is a high efficiency video codec. And of course I'm asking myself, you now how much does it degrade the video every time you re-render it? So first of all, let's head into the colors page. I'm doing this in DaVinci Resolve. I'm just going to add a simple color grade over here so that I bring that log picture profile, the S-Log3, back into a Rec. 709 color profile. And you can see this is how it looks. So I have my timeline set here. I'm going to go to my delivery tab and I'm going to render this out with that H.265 codec. I'm going to use a variable bitrate and the quality will be set to auto and best. Now this is what I typically use. Now I could use a constant bitrate but that's going to produce a larger video file and here is just an example of a very short clip but if this was a longer video yeah I want to save that space so this is why I'm transcoding this now from that all intra 4 to 2 10 bit into an 8 bit simple ready to use file with the H.265 or the high efficiency video codec. So let's render this one out first. So now I'm going to go back into my edit, into my timeline, and I'm going to replace this clip with the rendered out clip, which is called render one. So let's just bring this one in, replace it, go into the delivery tab, change this to render two, and then just update the job and render it out again. This time it went much faster. And now let's just repeat the process over and over again. So render two instead of render one over here, delivery. I'm gonna change the name to render three, update and render all. So now I have 10 renders and I'm going to compare the first render, which was the original file rendered for the first time with the color grade to the 10th render and see if there is any difference. So here I have render number 10. I'm going to overlap this with render number one. And I have two titles, render one and render 10. So let's see what the difference is. So if I go to full screen, honestly, I mean, between render one and render 10, I don't really see any big difference. I think the render one is sharper compared to the 10th render, but it's not that big of a difference. I was actually expecting it to be a lot more. So let's see how many more times I can render this before things start to go really bad. Okay, so now I'm 20 renders in. On the left, you can see render number one, and on the right, you can see render number 20. And honestly, I mean, still, I don't really see a big difference, which means that even though I've rendered this out 20 times, so the same clip over and over each time, decompressed and then compressed back with the H.265 codec, I mean, I still have most of the detail. Now you can see that the render 20 is slightly softer, especially here in the background. This one is a little sharper, but it's not that big of a difference after 20 renders. Now the original clip was a 4K clip and I'm always re-rendering it as a 4K clip. It's just the only conversion was going from that 10-bit 4 to 2 chroma subsampling to an 8-bit 4 to 0 standard sRGB color space. And I'm just re-rendering the same clip over and over again. And honestly, I mean, render number one and render number 20, I don't think there's a big difference. So really, how far am I willing to go with this.
I'm currently at render number 50 and I'm starting to see some artifacts appearing. Here you can see on the left side the original render number 1 and on the right side is render number 50. Now when you're looking at it from this far away it looks, well it looks quite similar, there's not that big of a difference, but when I start to zoom in into that 50 times re-rendered video file and if I go from frame to frame you can see how pixels are being grouped together into larger pixels, into larger blocks. Now if I compare this to the original first render, you can see how much more quality and how much more detail and sharpness is being preserved. Pretty much almost every pixel is being shown in this video, but if I go on to the 50 time compressed video, you can see that, that everything becomes soft and pixels are being grouped together into larger blocks. And this is how a video codec works. It pretty much looks at every single frame and all the pixels that are not changing within a few frames are just being copied. They're not being stored as separate data. They're just being copied from frame to frame. And everything that is moving in the frame gets that encoding. Now in this case where the whole frame is moving, every pixel in the frame is changing, everything then gets compressed. But if you have a shot like this where the background is static in pretty much every frame, well then the pixels from the background are just going to be copied from frame to frame and the file size of this video is going to be smaller and requires less bandwidth than the file size on, and the bandwidth of this video where everything is changing. But in order to make the file size smaller, pixels need to be grouped together into larger blocks. This is where you start to lose the quality and the fidelity of your video. And the more times you do this, the more you're grouping together bigger and bigger and bigger pixels. And after 50 renders, I start to see artifacts appearing. So a 50 times re-rendered video clip is, in my opinion, well, too much. But I think for YouTube, it's actually not that problematic because let's face it, I mean, you can probably not tell the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right. I mean, the one on the left looks a tiny bit sharper, but it's not that big of a difference. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it on my monitor over here and it's, well, you know, the one on the left looks a tiny bit sharper, but we have to keep in mind that even if I render a video clip out once with that really high quality video, I'm still uploading that to YouTube and YouTube takes that file and compresses it down even more with the VP9 video codec, which is similar to H.265. It's like a very efficient, very aggressive video codec and it turns, you know, my videos, which are typically a few gigabytes in size, into a video which is very, very small. This is why we can then stream it through YouTube and you can watch it in 4K resolution and it runs very smoothly because if you were to stream the original video file, which is a few gigabytes in size, well the playback would probably not be very smooth unless you have a blazingly fast internet connection. So the final verdict, I think for YouTube if you re-render it 50 times, it still looks okay, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you want to deliver a video file to a client, well then 50 times re-rendering, probably not a good idea. But what I did learn today, and I hope that you guys learned as well, is that, well, you can re-render your video clips and use it multiple times, maybe not 50 times, but definitely two or three times, it's okay, and you will most likely not see the difference. So there you have it. I mean, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new to this channel. And well, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.